Hypocrisy, thy name is BLM. And now one mom is standing up to them after a gunman almost killed her and her two kids. It all happened in Minneapolis, which has been the epicenter of violence and protests since the 2020 killing of George Floyd. Last Wednesday night, Arabella Foss Yarbrough called cops after her neighbor allegedly started firing a gun into her apartment. She was home cooking dinner for her kids. Officers arrived and there was a six hour standoff. Police snipers eventually killed the suspects. They reportedly found a pistol with an extended clip and bullet casings in his apartment. Then the protest began, but mom wasn't having any of it. On Saturday, she confronted the mob that had surrounded her home, saying this was very different than other police killings and that her neighbor could have killed her as he was trying to do, apparently. Take a look. That man was armed. George Floyd was not armed. Breonna Taylor was not armed. This man intentionally tried to kill us. For three years, I lived here, and none of you guys knocked on that man's door to see if he was okay. Not at all. He played loud music every day to cope with his mindset. There's bullet, there was casings in the hallway. The shot went through my door to the pillar to the kitchen. I was cooking food for my kids. He's dead now, so that can't happen. He shouldn't know. It doesn't matter. He shouldn't have been dead. Y'all should have came and helped him when he was alive. No, I don't. Now I can't get my shit because all you guys want to be here. My kids have to see you guys celebrate a man's life that tried to kill him. Uh, all of that is accurate. Police did not kill an unarmed man. The guy was shooting into his neighbor's home where there were children and he refused to surrender. But BLM has a narrative and they apparently don't care about things like facts. So was the mother right to call them out for their nonsense? Let's discuss with tonight's party panel. We've got New York Post columnist, Fox News contributor, and laptop from hell author, which we will be talking about later, <laughs> Miranda Devine is back. We've also got Fox News political analyst Juan Williams in front of the glorious Capitol and former Libertarian Party vice presidential candidate fresh from Freedom Fest, Spike Cohen. Um, welcome, everyone. So let us discuss. Um, Miranda, is this mom right? Is the anger and protest misplaced in this case? She's absolutely right, Kennedy, and she's also basically representing all of us, all victims and future victims who will be completely without any protection if BLM continues to alienate and demonise police. Those police snipers who shot that uh, crazy armed man to stop him from killing that mother and her kids were heroes. That poor woman, as if she hasn't been traumatised enough, now she has to have these, as you say, misguided, that's the nicest word I can think of, uh, just grifters hanging around, trying to demonise the police, trying to turn this into some sort of a racial problem when it's a crime problem. It's a violent crime problem. And that man with the gun, maybe he should have been rescued earlier and mm. given some sort of mental health or rehab help. But the fact was he was a danger and he needed to be taken out. All right. So Juan, clearly protests like this, they are weakening the movement, which, you know, partly started with good intentions. But I think the mom brings up a really good point. Where were you for the last three years? You know, why weren't you trying to, to help him them? Where is the uh, the energy there? Why isn't it going to things like community interventions where, you know, maybe this type of passion would be uh, better put to use? Wow, that sounds like a BLM argument, but I, I just want to say I'm with the mom here. I think that, you know, from what I can understand, she's saying this man was terrorizing her and that he was firing bullets into her family's home and, uh, you know, threatening not only her but her children. I mean, of course she was going to call the cops, and of course the cops were going to respond. Uh, I don't, and the cops were in a six-hour standoff. Now, I, that's why I say emotionally I'm with her. I don't think there's any question. But on the other hand, I also understand that someone lost their life. Then that someone may have been someone's husband, someone's dad, someone's son, you know, I don't know. But a human being died. Okay, 
So given what we know about police behavior, let's say in a place like Uvalde, or the fact that the guy who shot up the uh, supermarket in Buffalo, he's in jail, he's alive, this guy's dead, maybe you could understand that people are wondering, well, did you have to kill him? Was that the only step? I, I like what you said, Kennedy. Maybe you have some community intervention, something else. Maybe that's where. But, uh, you know, the, the police were in a difficult position, and I think they have to be respected here because they're dealing with someone who, according to the mom, was out of his mind. Yeah, and the only reason he didn't kill those kids is because he has bad aim. It's not because he wasn't trying to. You know, th this is not a virtuous yeah. person. And I guess that's the problem I have here, Spike, with when you have, you know, fully emotional arguments in reaction to things like this, uh, y y you don't really have proper police reform. And maybe there are ways that, that police officers can work with uh, mental health authorities in calming these things down before they get to this point. But what do you see here, Spike? You know, listen, in the incidents where police have wrongfully killed or assaulted someone uh, who was innocent, you'll find no greater ally than me and, and many other libertarians in fighting for accountability for bad actors in police departments across the country. This appears not to be the case of that. And uh, it, it is unfortunate that a lot of people who I think are on the ground there who, who I, misguided is the right word, because I think a lot of them thought that this was someone who was wrongfully killed by police. Unfortunately, they're being led at the top by an organization who rallied people who were against police brutality to vote for the architect of police brutality as well as the war on drugs and many other things Joe Biden and this is yet another example of that it's also an example of how I mean thank God this mother and her children aren't dead uh, because the fact is when seconds count or sometimes split seconds count uh, police are several minutes or an hour plus away uh, and this is yet another example of why uh, Americans need to realize government is not in a position to protect us we need to arm train and protect ourselves and thank God this didn't end in a death but it easily could have. And I'm just thankful that, uh, as far as we can tell, the right person died here. Yes. And, you know, uh, all I have to say to BLM and the protesters, if you are trying to strengthen your movement, you're doing it wrong.